Hello everyone and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Victoria and Cole go out on the town. At the athletic club, Summer and Chance toasted their day. Summer inquired as to whether Chance had been having issues working. Chance answered that things at Chancellor Winters were exceptionally tense. Chance asked about how things had been going with Claire. Summer said that she had let Kyle know that she was fine with everything, except she admitted that it was not reality. Summer stressed that she would be consigned to part-time mother status. Summer proposed that she and Kyle ought to set up some guardianship limits to guarantee had the opportunity with Harrison. Chance prompted against getting legal counselors included, and he recommended that she work things out with Kyle. Chance guaranteed Summer that Harrison wouldn't disregard her. Summer contended that Harrison never thought about his natural mother, so Claire could without much of a stretch supplant Summer similarly as Summer had supplanted Tara. Chance proposed to divert Summer from her inconveniences. Chance inclined in for a kiss. Summer recommended that they go higher up to her suite. Chance requested Summer's room key so he could go first and set the state of mind. After possibility left, Summer messaged Kyle that she expected to converse with him. At the tack house, Claire said that Victoria looked ravishing. Victoria inquired as to whether the dress was to an extreme for her date with Cole. Claire detailed that Cole had a Goliath smile all over when he had said that he and Victoria were going out. Cole showed up. Claire happily said that she was amped up for her folks' relaxed supper. Victoria said that she and Cole were presumably going to go through most the late evening talking about Claire. Claire demanded that their date be a without Claire's own. Claire said that she would not hold up. At society, Mariah inquired as to whether Tessa was prepared for their night out. Tessa gloomily answered that she needed to cover for somebody at the eatery. Mariah proposed to find a spot at a table without anyone else and watch her better half do her thing. Claire called society and requested that Tessa ensure that her folks got a peaceful table and a container of champagne. Tessa energetically blamed Claire for playing relational arranger. Tessa explained to Mariah why Claire had called. Mariah said that Claire was being sweet, and Mariah really regretted having given Kyle a difficult time about Claire turning into Harrison's caretaker. Mariah said that she would be able to relate to Claire tracking down her folks in her twenties. Tessa said that Claire was attempting to fabricate a nuclear family she won't ever have. At the point when Victoria and Cole showed up at society, Tessa let them know that the champagne on their table was politeness of Claire. Victoria and Cole plunked down and toasted their future. Victoria let Cole know that Claire had referenced Cole's solicitation to Kyle to get a logger. Cole said that they had vowed not to discuss Claire. Victoria proposed that they discuss when Cole would be getting back to Oxford. Cole said that Claire was a major part of why he had stayed in Genoa City, yet he was too inquisitive about what could occur with Victoria in the event that he remained. Victoria said that she proved unable to deny their developing association. Cole said that he hadn't had a serious relationship in quite a while. Victoria said that she had been in a comparative spot. They concurred that they were both firearm bashful. Kyle showed up at the attached house to give Claire her wallet that Harrison had found. Claire said that Kyle could have just messaged her, and Kyle said that he was upset for messing with Claire. Claire said that Kyle was not irritating her, and she had quite recently been preparing to peruse a secret book. After Claire griped that the books she had been perusing were unsurprising, Kyle recommended that Claire compose a book herself. Claire inquired as to whether Kyle needed some tea. As Claire and Kyle drank tea, Claire related that her Auntie Jordan had constrained Claire to pay attention to the plots of wrongdoing books to sort out how the culprit had gotten found out. Kyle kidded that Claire would make an incredible cop or criminal. Claire said that she wasn't keen on one or the other choice, and Kyle answered that he was happy on the grounds that he would have rather not tracked down one more babysitter for Harrison. There was a thump at the entryway, and Claire welcomed Mariah. Mariah said that she had seen Claire's folks at society and figured Claire may be forlorn. Mariah offered takeout food and margaritas. At the point when she saw Kyle, Mariah inquired as to whether she was interfering with something. Kyle said that it seemed like they required a ladies' night out, and he pardoned himself to return to Harrison. 
Kyle accepted Summer's text requesting that he talk. Mariah let Claire know that they shared a ton for all intents and purpose, since she had an insane youth. Mariah made sense of that she had been brought up in a clique and found her genuine mother in her twenties. Mariah trusted that she was verification that Claire could make do and be damn blissful. Claire said that she hadn't thought there was anybody who might comprehend. That's what Mariah said to empathize on adolescence injury, Mariah was Claire's lady. Mariah said that Claire appeared to be getting along nicely. Mariah inquired as to whether she had intruded on something with Kyle. Mariah said that Kyle was quite possibly of her dearest companion, however she had her highs and lows with Summer. Mariah portrayed Summer as being the cause all her own problems now and again. After Mariah left, Cole and Victoria got back to the tack house. Cole conjectured that Claire had hit the hay to give her folks some protection. Victoria said thanks to Cole for supper, and they kissed. Victoria inquired as to whether Cole needed to remain for a beverage. Cole said that he needed to remain more than anything, however he would have rather not surged things. Cole left. At the athletic club, Summer got a text from Chance saying that he was prepared for her higher up. As she prepared to go up, she got a text from Kyle requesting to meet in the first part of the day. Mariah got back to society and told Tessa that Kyle had been at Claire's home. Mariah said that her discussion with Claire about their insane young lives had been fantastic. In Paris, Audra showed up at Exhaust's lodging. Audra requested that Exhaust tell her beginning and end that had occurred with Ashley. Exhaust informed Audra concerning Ashley's different characters and how they had come about because of a cooperation Ashley had with Alan's twin. Exhaust made sense of that the characters had gotten confounded and thought Exhaust had caused the injury rather than Martin. Audra said that she was unable to envision how panicked Ashley had been. Audra asked if Exhaust could reunite with Ashley after she recuperated. Exhaust said that he was liberated from the culpability he had felt and that he could at last let Ashley go. Audra looked suspicious and said that Exhaust was tricking himself. Exhaust demanded that he had traveled to Paris as it were for Audra, not so much for Ashley. Exhaust conceded that he had thought Audra was in Paris to turn his colleagues against him. Exhaust said that he no more minded to battle Audra, since he was still infatuated with her. Audra demanded that Exhaust didn't adore her and that he recently loathed that he proved unable have her. Exhaust denied Audra's allegation, and he said that he was so appreciative for what they had together. Exhaust said that he had loathed neutralizing Audra, and he had understood that all he truly needed was to accompany her. That's what Exhaust said assuming Audra needed glissade so a lot, he would give it to her. Audra expected Exhaust's proposition was dependent upon them reuniting. Exhaust said that he would leave his chief in the first part of the day, in any case. Audra said that leaving wouldn't be essential since she didn't need a payoff or remunerate from Exhaust. Audra admitted that she had covertly been persuading the board to permit an unknown financial backer to purchase out Glissade. Audra said that she would before long be in charge of the organization. Audra inconsiderately said that Exhaust had lost, and that's what she trusted it harms like damnation.